Oh, it is live. It is live. Uh, what? Never mind. I didn't realize it is live. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to be talking about live wire and uh, anything else. So uh, let's say hello to everybody. Um, how are you doing, uh, Lady Cat? Um, just fine. How are you? <laughs> Magic Mike. Oh, oh, hi, everybody. That was that was dirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Derpy? You know, I don't really think I have a lot of stuff to complain about today. So okay. I think I'll just file a lawsuit. All right. Uh, what? I'll, okay. All right. So you can take it all the way to the Supreme Court. Although I was going to originate in the Supreme Court, which could oh, totally that, happen. Good I don't know. I, I have. Uh, I think we need to do uh, some age testing on some certain ships, but uh, we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, go on to the bug fixes. Oh, shut up. All right. Um, again, we're going to go through the HTML5 tips and tricks in a little bit. Um, Tip one, uh, don't open the browser. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yes. Um, there was a thing in HTML5 that happened for a while that sometimes when you logged in, you had a gray screen and you couldn't do anything with it. But basically, a refresh fixed it. But they have uh, they figured that one out and and uh, implemented a, uh, a fix for us. So well, that's about it with that. Um, well, the other thing that they've, uh, they did last night was, uh, this morning was the beginning of the 12 days of Kixmas, and it seems that, um, uh, that some people would log in and got all 12 days at once. Um, I guess they're doing something to prevent them from getting them again. Um, I saw about, what, six days of the more? Most of them didn't really seem all that useful for players that are caught up um some build and vxp tokens for stuff that was already you know you know and then black like missiles stuff that's like uh, okay so it's like it's like somebody giving me a ps2 for christmas right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah or a betamax yeah <laughs> so all righty um, has anybody seen anything that was of use for players that are caught up? I don't know. I only An saw like entire free ever suite could be useful. I mean, I did sometimes get we've got pillage and anathema at the same time. You can crank out one or two targets with the free one. Um, yeah, I guess we do have tokens, and there are more because they've given us the old armors on those, so they're not quite as. They're not quite as good as what you might uh, already have built. And they have so, sync drive engines on them, don't they? Yeah, they have the sync drives. Are, yeah, they're, oh, they're I'll need to refit. Yeah, but I'm saying we do have, you know, through this thing or another thing, we do have uh, um, tokens and, and whatnot to refit them and we will see. So, alrighty, uh, let's move on then. All right. Uh, right now we are in ten point five. Um, we are going to be getting the. Uh, we we'll talk about the designer diary later. We're we've started an alpha and beta in the live wire December raid. Um, and um, 12 days of X Kixmas begins. Uh, yeah, they have a photon upgrade. Uh, I don't know what day that's supposed to drop, but for normal people, it might, the raid might be over. So, Hold on. Is that, is that like a all my photons are X1 instantly now? Or is that a, oh, here's a few upgrade tokens? I'm thinking that's some, some upgrade tokens. Because if they're all going to be X1... I'm not going to get the the tokens for them now. I don't know. Yeah, but if it happens in um, if it happens in eleven days from now, yeah, not, oh, not quite I still useful. want to. Yeah, yeah, not nearly as useful. 
No. And by the way, this right here, the slide we're looking at, this is like a better calendar than anything else, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, it it's pretty much everything except for the TLCs. An instant? I don't know, but I don't, okay, for one ship. I, I don't know what that means. Um, so um, and then we have uh, next week we are going to have uh, VXP weekend, the new FM where we are, you know, we think we already identified what the, uh, the new uh, technology is going to be. We'll get to later. Um, we have the December building pack updates, which were described in the designer diary, which we'll get to later. And the December contest. Woohoo! There we go. Um, so look out, old builds. <laughs> I think you know. we throw a snowball at somebody. Yes. And that's the answer. Sorry if you're in this other so. manager. <laughs> I like the uh, Krampus, which is supposed to be both PVE and PVP this time. And then Bounty. So let's give it another click. Alrighty, um, you know, basically what we just described. Um, hopefully, when we get the uh, PV calendar and uh, the 10.52 update, it will give us an exact date for the skirmish TLC. But everything is pretty much as we would expect. Um, the only thing you might want to pay attention to is uh, if you see, if you see Gladius upgrade token somewhere, and you're not at X1 or not at U3. Um, that is going to be the uh, the ship of choice in the next pillage. So keep that in mind. Um, and, what's Cat talking about? All our, all the photons are now. It's, it's probably my guess is they're talking about one of those offers for fifteen bucks or whatever. Not <laughs> one of those free kicks. Like, not one of those kicksmith things. Okay. Unless, unless, Kat, if you want to answer, did you buy something to have that happen, or did you get them all at X1 for free? Because I can't imagine they gave them all X1 for free. Yep, yep, to which one? We don't know. <laughs> I'm afraid, yep, to the buying Not one. free. Not free, okay. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. All righty. Okay, yeah, that normally happens, the... Uh, the day of the raid or the day before the raid and sometimes it'll pop up again on like sunday uh, if i didn't buy it day one and i'm done with my raid by sunday i'm not going to buy it on sunday mm -hmm. yep so but you know collecting tokens and whatnot and still upgrading them past uh um past the raid is still useful because they will show up in um and a, a TLC or two. Um, okay. along. So, and then they will also later show up in pillage. So, it is helpful past the raid. And uh, when we get to genuine, can you, you want to pronounce that one on pillage? Anybody want to help? Jan Jan January. Six. The January six. January. Jana. Jana yeah. January. There you go. Not Jana. I would say I would say Jana. Okay. Alrighty. Well, if we've covered that, let's uh, let's move on. All right. Yeah, this is the the first one. Um, that would be scary sticking out of my stocking. <laughs> yeah. But it is kind of a cool picture. Good artwork. Alrighty. Let's move on. All right. Um, hmm. I guess I should have put this. Let's skip ahead and ex we'll explain this one in a bit. We'll go back to it. All right. Um, designer diary. Um, the Ronin has twin firing arcs on either side, which we'll show you in a minute. They're 60 degrees. The act is an effective CM shield versus non-smart torpedoes. Um, yeah, that, that brings, a, you know, once we get to that, that that asks a lot of questions as far as what countermeasures we put on our ships. Um, important note on components, no need to reserve a slot for a new engine. Your old glory engine 
and similar will suffice. Note there will be no new skirmish engine for tier 9.5. Okay, now let's go back to the last slide. Okay, so I see possibly three choices, but these are probably the main two. We'll get to the third choice later when we get to the ship. Um, I don't think that one's going to be a likely choice. Um, but we have the Old Glory, which is a limited tier nine. And we have the Reef Rider engine, which is a unlimited 8.5 engine. Uh, they both run at the same speed, turn speed, map speed, combat speed. So these can be used uh, together. They both have the same build time. Um, the Old Glory engine provides you, um, there we go, provides you with additional survival. Um, the Reef Rider only provides explosive, while the Old Glory provides a little bit more explosive um, and concussive. And, you know, that concussive is not there, plus a little bit additional evade. Um, I did the math on this one. Okay. Um, the old glory in the best possible scenario for it, yeah. where splash damage reduction is useless and you have a U0 fleet, it will be 4.3% better. You'll take 4.3% less damage using the old glory than the reef rider at the best possible scenario. Okay. But that is and, bonus. And you, Go ahead. That's for that's for that's for concussive damage. Mm -hmm. If all the damage is concussive, splash damage reduction is useless. You're at U zero. You have two of each armor. You'll get four point three percent lower damage based off the survival with the old glory than you will with the reef rider. You have to. So it's not you know you can't see three thousand two hundred and think oh that's really good. You have to figure out how much survival you already have, and it turns out to be four percent better. You also have a bit higher evade but you lose out on the 10% damage. Um, I think the 10% damage is better because that works like a true 10%. It doesn't go from 470% to 480. It goes 470 times 1.1. Um, you don't need to know the math, just that the old glory is not super helpful when you, on the, on the defense survival side, when you run the numbers, but the reef rider still is with the offense. That isn't impacted by how much you already have on there. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, and I was thinking if we see, if we see that, well, we don't know what the flag looks like at this point. Yeah, um, I, w I assume the flagship gave identical bonuses to the regular ones. In reality, it will be it will be better. Yeah, but um, what I was thinking that uh, the Reef Rider looks like a, I was going to agree. It looks like a much better option overall. But if we see that maybe one ship is taking significantly more damage, mm -hmm. maybe the old glory would be a good choice on a single ship if you are, you know, if it's going to be some sort of tanking type of uh, situation. Yep, that's I would agree. So, alrighty, well let's go skip the next slide. We've already discussed it and um, continue on with the designer diary. All right, we got five new upgrades. Um, the War Academy is an upgrade. We'll get you a little bit more storage space. Um, uh, the titanium extractor and the uranium facility, which at this point, mine are maxed out, and I don't need to go out and collect titanium and uranium. I just, you know. I haven't built mine yet. Okay, well, <coughs> what are you even building? Nothing. Why haven't you built those? I forgot about them. Okay. Uh, they're they're a big help. You don't have yeah, to. Yeah, they're a big help. And also, um, I was time. planning. I was planning to bring this up later on, um, in regards to some of these upgrades. Now we might see that these upgrades are prerequisites for um, the next level of your outpost. This is what happened last time. Um, when they had these, you know, sort of halfway between releases that we had to have. They said we had to have three things upgraded, but I think we only needed to have two. And if you start and upgrading then, your outputs from the first day, you didn't need it. You know, one of those, you know, things. Yep. 
So I, I would get a, you know, you might want to get in your base and start um, upgrading your uh, extractor and uranium just for uh, multiple purposes. And while we're on the subject, people who got the free Everest fleet did also get free Outpost 12 and likely free Doc 16. Okay. Yeah, I did see somebody curious about that. Why they my, were... my mini account did did get the outpost upgraded. I see. The dock was already max, but the outpost did get upgraded. Derpy the calf? Yes. <laughs> That's its actual name. Okay. Um, all right. And we get a new launch pad level. This has been a long time coming. Um, we're getting a new bunker, bunk, bunker buster for buildings and daisy cutters for ships. Um, I do not think any of the rockets have been upgraded in four to five years at least. So, um, well, we did get the, oh, the one that surfaces ships, the depth charge one. That was the newest one. But as far as the damage dealers, we haven't seen anything new in years. What were you saying, Lady Cat? Yeah, it's been years and years. Yeah. And remember how much we used to loved uh, using the bunker buster on people's docks. I'm going to post Pepe's base cords and BB hammer time. Feel free to come say hello. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. And uh, maybe we're going to get a special for our docks to, uh, you know, because everybody got rid of the anti-rocket uh, turret that we had. Uh, you know, there was the um, like a limited one, and then you know there was two versions of it, but everybody's taken that out of their base years was ago. Was anyone asking for this? I'm, hmm. sh I'm sure somebody's like, "Oh, why do we have a launch pad?" You know, it's only good for pinches. So you know, if somebody was just looking through and be like, "I don't know if players were asking for it," but yeah, I, could I mean, somebody, you know, they're gonna have to do this same thing again unless they make the rockets do a percentage damage on the fleet. So they don't have to update it every time we get more armor or whatever else. Is this for PvP or PVE or what or both? I I'm assuming it for that. both. And but the. My fear is if we're adding another level of bunker buster or daisy cutter, they're also going to have to go back and take a look at the build times. I, I only build pinches, but if you build the big pinches and this is the next generation, you know, I don't know if I want to spend 12 hour build time for a, for a bunker buster. Yeah. yeah. One day build yeah. time for a bunker buster. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's you know. Maybe it would only have a PvP app, uh, application at that point. If it had a uh, you know a fifteen minute build time, then it might be useful in um, PVE. But yeah, with a one day build time, I don't. Uh, I don't see a use. Um, uh, both rockets will require the new level yada yada, um, and then undetermined uh, combat perk for tier 9 and tier 10 conquer halls in the uh, conquest yard upgrade so alrighty well um, anything else we should move on all right our HTML5 tips We've gone through these before um, just a reminder because we only have a uh, um, 22 days until HTML, uh, our flash is gone. So go ahead. Skip this slide. We've already gone through this. So let's just, just a reminder for everybody. All right. The Harlock's Vanguard campaign, um, starts tonight in, um, in two hours plus it's basically three prize packs. Um, the first prize pack is for mutineers. You get 1.25 million raid points. We do not know how many encounters are in, are in these or how long they take to do or how easy or hard they are. Uh, and then you got another one for 1.5 million using Gladius and then 4 million for the photon one. Um, and 4 million is the price of the Ronin hole. So they're basically saying this is, it's a pretty easy way to get the, to get the best 
I mean, it's it's so easy. It might be seven encounters with, you know, who knows what it is. I mean, it's, it's there. I mean, maybe it's an easy, it should be an easy way to get this many points and you have to do them in that order. It's not like you can just do the 4 million. You need to do the 1.25, the 1.5, and then the 4 million um, in order. It's just like a regular TLC with, with prize pack. It's prize pack one, two, and three. So you can't really pick and choose just to get the 4 million, but yeah, hopefully their single encounter. I don't. I don't know what they're going to be. But they start so late. I mean, they start after the raid. Well, originally it was going to start with Alpha, but then um, I asked in Discord, are, are, "Are these points going to count if you were in um, not an Alpha and you do it right when the raid starts?" And they're like, "Oh, well, um, we're going to change it to to start with the last uh, with the last sector." Yeah, well, that's kind of late for some people. If I have to get well, up at 6 a.m. It, it runs for six days, and you got to do it once. And there's yeah, but if I could have done that, and it was easier, then. But it's okay. we don't know it's easier. We don't know that we don't know that yeah, it's easier. It might be harder. Yeah, we don't know. So, alrighty. Well, let's move on from that. All right, um, live wire. We uh, Derpy's already done a preview of the uh, um, of the targets in an earlier stream, um, and uh, didn't send me any screenshots, but I didn't ask. So uh, generally, um, let's go to the next one. Um, the one forty four. Um, Declared as an auto target, um, it's quite easy if you drive it. Um, not a didn't appear to be a bad target, not a terribly great auto target. Um, the 146 appears to be the old 800 and something, uh, or something very close. I'm not uh, sure on that one. But. It's close. It, it sort of has a similar feel and similar number of of buildings and ships. It does seem like there's a lot more there. Than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. um, still not an awful target as far as damage, but it feels a little bit long. Um, and then we have the uh, all, all of the uh, all of the S and X targets, uh, the buildings as with as they implemented after the first day of the last raid will surface after five minutes. Um, the X target is different. <laughs> with similar to the last X or some of the previous X targets where if you kill all the priority buildings, it's over. Um, but this one starts launching ships after three minutes and surfacing buildings after five. So the, that's an interesting potential strategy too. As in sit in the corner for five minutes and wait for three minutes, three minutes. And then Why? start killing ships. I think it was for which target? The one, the nine, the nine twelve, the nine twelve. The ships start coming in after three minutes. Yeah, I, there are so few buildings in there. I don't really think it it matters too much. Yeah, okay, so, a lot of ships. So, yeah, there was a lot of ships. Out yeah, there. they said, "What's the number of growth callers we won here? Two? No, fourteen. <laughs> okay. Um. And then the 84 is one that we've seen before that if you drive it, you can complete it in about 30 seconds. Um, prob you know, with the countdown timer, it's going to take a little bit longer if you auto it. But um, as I recall, you could get instant repair on the map if you drove it, uh, instant repair in the dock if you um, auto it. Um, but it is, you know, at 100K, um, versus 250k as a time option if you're just willing to just sit there and just grind away um and you're able to complete it for if you are x1 and you're able to complete it for in 30 seconds for instant on the instant in the um on the water time wise it, it it's it feels it doesn't feel like an awful 
option, but you don't really get. You hit that one. How many points did you actually get? Uh, I I got ninety thousand and change. So okay. if I want hundred million, I'm getting ninety thousand. If I want ninety million, I'm getting ninety thousand per hit. I need to hit, you know, carry the six. Too damn many of these things. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, it's way too many, but it's you know, there's people that don't have, um, you know, are having hard times with the other targets. But you, it, you can easily get four million from doing that. Yeah. It's only four you four you this. Yeah, but it's not a doesn't feel like an awful option for players that don't have uh, photons uh, at a point where they're. They're doing we well. Have the X1 or most of the X1 Gladius, but no photons. Okay. Well, or, or photons not built. I mean, there's uh, there's some people that build in really weird ways, and um, mm -hmm. it would not be surprising that there are people out there because you do you do run across the, between the TLCs and other things. There's upgrade tokens. There's stuff out there that might get you to X1, and there's people that will for some reason, just continue to build until they get their last set of fleets done, and then they move to the next one. Yeah, yeah they, they keep upgrading up. the old stuff instead of yeah. building the new stuff. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to be hitting them, but just saying that it's an option for people. Okay. Uh, let's move on. All right. Uh, just some limited stuff in the store. Um, yada yada yada. You know, we also have the the, the limited uh, torpedo. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, but um, this is just the new stuff and the general cost. And we'll just go through the the individual items. Let's go to the the Ronin. All right. Um, the Ronin is a sub. Um, despite not really getting announced as a sub, it's it's fairly frisky at, at 42 base combat speed. You um, know what else is for? Okay, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> no, say it. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to say his Everest. He, he was going to say his Everest is a little frisky, but um. Um. Does it? Okay, should I say this or not? It's a sub, but does it go down? <laughs> it just stays down. It, it doesn't ever. It, does, it doesn't pop up. It doesn't go up or down. It just stays there. It's not on a timer. It's either okay. you know, either you know, like a Fang Two slash Liam sub. Exactly. So it never surfaces. Yeah, it has a cloak efficiency stat, which lets us know it's a sub, and does beg the question is cloak efficiency going to be useful and this is where i was talking about the the third engine possibility if it's actually useful as far as cloak efficiency i don't think it will be but magnus 3 um which gives you uh if fully upgraded or ranked up or retro retrofitted is um gives you 75 percent cloak efficiency by itself and then like 112% combat speed. But I don't think that's going to be a good option. Um, but you never know. I'll say I don't think cloak efficiency is a mechanic they're going to mess with for this. for this Because people don't like driving subs because they go up and down and because you have to try and well, hide. And time, cloak cloak efficiency. Efficiency. I don't, players don't like either of those things. So I don't think they're going to mess with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they are either. Um, I think they gave it um, – subs have a built-in um, visible range, not the same visible range like you see with uh, with the torpedoes, um, but it's, it's similar in, in mechanism where they can be seen without sonar from that range. And then it's, it's, it's semi-complicated complication as far as like – um, sonar versus cloak efficiency versus visible range. I don't. Th I agree. I don't think they're going to get into that. But um, it is uh, a potential possibility, but I, a remote one at that. So, um, all right. Um, sonar range is sixty-four. Um, 
Uh, the I guess the interesting part of this is, uh, you know, well, we have the rogue band aura, which is what we've seen for a long time. And in the preview, the GIF that we'll show you, it appears that you have to get it all the way to X1 in order to see this. I mean, this is, I, I really don't like this new thing that they're doing where they do not show you um, your auras. Um, at least the important, you know, because it's, it's hard for some people to figure out how to keep in range to keep all these stacking auras around. Um, and then we have the, uh, the other two special abilities is, well, it's one, but one on each side, um, a, uh, a anti-torpedo countermeasure um, has a reload time of 1.2. Um, salvo of one, that 1 1.2 gets down to 0 0.3, uh, which is ranking. And then with the the, uh, the countermeasure special that we get, it gets down to 0 0.2, the maximum fire rate. So um, you see this range here, which is a little deceptive. Well, it's not really deceptive, but it shows 47 to 50. But once you add the special on, uh, that range, it goes from 47 to 87.5, I think, or 80, somewhere right around there. Um, so it is a much wider brand uh, band than it shows. Has an accuracy of 135, which begs yet another question. Uh, one more click. <laughs> All right. If we have the built-in countermeasures that only show up at the side with a 60-degree angle, and has an accuracy of 135. And then we have the Comorant that is the other um, countermeasure that we have that does uh, anti-torpedo. Only has an accuracy of 60. I'm guessing, but we'll have to wait until VXP weekend or something else, that they may not have any effect whatsoever. I mean, with the fact that they've jacked the accuracy up to 135 makes Hold me on. you're you're onto something don't you what <laughs> oh and never mind i was going to say if the if the accuracy if the range on the cormorant is greater than the range of this built-in weapons you shouldn't put the cormorant on but it's lower so yeah it's lower it's, it's, it's going to cover the inside range if but it's I'm, effective at all but you're saying it has 60% accuracy before it's buffed, whereas the built-in specials have 135% accuracy before it's buffed. Before it's buffed. So therefore, the um, the countermeasure, the evasion of the incoming torpedoes may be so high that these don't actually work. But, but the slack evade on those things, or the yeah. countermeasure evade on those things. Yeah, is so high that this may not be an effective use of a slot. But we don't know at this at this point. But till we get to VXP weekend. But if you're shutting down everything, I, you know, if this works, um, why do they have this? Why do they have the uh, this the, the on the other side? So why, why have who what? So and then we'll, let's uh, one more click. All right. Here is the uh, here's the shields in action. Um, there's a couple things to notice in this video. Uh, one, there was no damage done prior to this starting, so I'm assuming these uh, frost fields were already there. And when this sub dies, it also creates its own frost field. Um, the other thing to notice, it appears to be very effective at shutting down these torpedoes. Do any of them get through? I mean, it, they gave us a, a 240p resolution clip. Yeah, but boom. I don't think any of them get through. Yeah, not even, none of them are getting through. So, but when, whenever we have really, really good countermeasures, they do weird things that make them not work very well. So. Well, part of this is like, now you're going to have, if these ships really move this slow the whole time, I mean... That would be fine, but you know, if they're moving faster, um, there's a chance that they're going to start coming at you 
not within that 60 degree angle. So you have right. 120 yeah. out of 360. So you have 240 degrees that you're unprotected. So it might so be that, worth it to put one cormorant on there. We don't even know if we need a gale four on the other one either. I'm assuming when I see that proto nem leave the leave, the proto nems are usually firing off the mortars with all mm -hmm. more of these things. And so. not to not to overanalyze this, but we see as soon as this hunter here dies, it leaves a it leaves a right there. You saw yeah. it. It leaves a slow, slow field, ice field. Green also, green watch green. what happens to the to the speed when you hit the ice field. It gets slows down massively. It's a tactical field. I assume that ship has tactical field resist, and its speed is already cut in half, even with, I'm assuming, having that on there. Though I think tactical field resist is going to be pretty important on this thing. Yeah, and the other, th yeah. But we don't even know that this is the actual target. I mean, maybe this is an old one that we forgot about like the, the subsector basis for the Drax. It's similar. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. But I don't remember seeing this. I'm not sure I remember seeing this mechanism with the uh, with the, the ship dying and creating the ice fields. But so. All righty. Um, let's go back one click because I forgot to cover the upgrades. Um. <clears throat> Projectile speed is U1 plus 20%, concussive reload 50%, and then U3 is survival and torpedo critical chance. So, okay. Any more thoughts on this ship before we get to the specials? Okay. I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's nothing super. I mean, the torpedo, anti torpedoes are a bit weird, but other than that, it's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we all cringe just when we hear that it's Scorch. You know, we have bad memories, so. I miss that raid. You're lucky. <sighs> okay. So let's move on. All right, we have the, uh, the non-limited torpedo. It's basically 15% less damage to the limited torpedo. That's about it. The rest of it's uh, exactly the same. Um, so, and you can earn 10 of these in this raid. Um, you have the opportunity to, or, um, to get 10 of them in pillage. And then you're gonna have a TLC that's coming out the same week as Bounty, um, where you get another 10. And then pillage again, giving you a total of 40. Um, oh, let's go back to the ship again, because the ship has 10 weapon slots, not the normal eight. And two of them are countermeasures. Only yeah, two. two of them can be countermeasures, but could also be normal ones. So there's a possibility if we can only get 40 limited torpedoes before now in the raid, and we need 50 weapon slots, we might have to use a few other things depending on what what those last two slots are. Yeah. If they're both countermeasures, problem solved. If they're not, you have to use the regular regular torpedoes. Yeah. So let's go on to the special. All right. Um, the Saya Torpedo Bay. Um, it's uh, the next step up from the blister hot blast bay. Um, weighs a little bit more. Um, increases the uh, torpedo critical chance to 40% and well above anything that you have in R&D. And then um, your critical damage gets it added 60% on. So, so it, it, it is a step up. Uh, it's not limited, so it's fairly affordable to get. So, uh, here's the limited special, which is a pretty powerful special. Um, and it, creates, my fault. <laughs> it makes your countermeasures reload in half the time, increases yeah. their range, which range on countermeasures isn't very helpful as they only fire once, but concussive accuracy is pretty good, and then. That survival number, especially at U0, also pretty good. 
Yeah. And this is better than signal amplification armor. Yeah, and the countermeasure range is helpful with these um, um, built-in countermeasures. Because yeah, otherwise, right. you had that range of three. Now you have a much larger window to, to potentially fire. So, um, especially if you're turning and trying to catch, I think that's the reason they gave it such a large blind spot is to force you to adjust faster in order to catch them within that uh, available window that, the, that these would fire. So, but I would recommend getting this one. This is, it's quite, uh, it's quite powerful. We're not gonna be able to auto this ship though. I don't, yeah, I, it's gonna be tricky to figure out how they're not gonna auto. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. Um, let's move on. All right, we have the Bushido battery. Um, we assume this is going to be an FM prize. Um, adds 50% concussive damage and uh, splash damage reduction of 6,400. Um, they are they're taking a lot of uh, investment or making us make a lot of investment in splash damage reduction. Um, both through this, and can you go to slide 21? This is 6,400 here. And this is what we, um, you were able to earn five of in pillage. Now we see another um, 12,800. So <clears throat> this is the other special you're gonna wanna put on your Ronin. So, I don't know because everybody has said splash damage reduction doesn't work, but maybe they've somehow adjusted this target so it does work. Um, so, um, yeah. So go back to. Well, I guess we're pretty much done with the uh, the slides. I don't know if I want to do Canada facts this week. Um, unless Derpy doesn't come back. Derpy, are you there? Because maybe we wanted to no. peek targets. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not there. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to take a look at some of the uh, some of the targets? Um, yeah. Or do you want to comment on what? Or, I don't know if sure if you were listening, but do you want to comment on any things about the last two specials? Um, they're offered in the raid as well. So they're offered in pillage also. Be careful you don't get 10 of them when you only need five. Yeah, that's true. And, um, but the huge investment they're making us make in splash damage reduction. And I don't think that's that works. Yeah, but, but maybe that's a result of how they built the targets, you know, and it's, how it's they've adjusted. Possible. You know, like um, the splash damage and and the splash fall off and all the other things associated with it. Maybe they're like, okay, we're going to make splash damage reduction work now. Um, after changing it over a year ago and having it not work, so um, maybe that's you know they're trending in a different direction as far as that goes. I think they saw it was on like the open water warfare battery or whatever else. I'm not sure, but yeah. All right, so you want to hit some? Uh, yeah, you... this is the 144. Okay. And I've got some... five ships now, so. Okay. What were your concerns with the age of these ships? Oh, it wasn't these ships. It was the Praetorians. Ah, what was going on with my Praetorians? Hey, you're Praetorians. <laughs> Who's Praetorians? We were talking about, <laughs> about old, old, old. Um, Ah, I see. Old ships. Hmm. This is what we thought old ships meant. Yeah, yeah, the ship ship show. Hmm. Which is so. why I pulled all of our old ships out of storage. <laughs> well, I don't have any old ships. So. Well, I had a gore saver. And My photons were, were in our picture. 
Okay, so I just killed the first uh, bunch of ships and then this turret as well as the titanium generator. Um, so, and this this death scythe, which I use the UAVs to reduce their accuracy on. Then there's something else here, which I'm trying to get to pop up, but it's being difficult. There's a missile right here on this close one, so it's fine if, if that happens. You just don't want to surface inside a corrosive turret. Okay, I don't remember the shrouding. What was that all about? The ships are being difficult and rude is what that's about. They is that different? I don't remember that. That's different than day one of the raid, okay. but it it that's the behavior on the last bit, so right. sorry, I just forgot. Okay. I remember that there's a missile turret right here, so I'm gonna go close to this end. And then, yeah, hit the stun building if I can. I don't understand why the ships, ships have the shrouding thing. They go through a period where you can't really see them to where they're completely invisible, to where they're shrouded and can't get shot at or shoot, which I don't, I don't like or understand too much. And I hate that shrouding. I don't see the point. I don't know why yeah, see, these ones, that. they're only like 5% above the water anyway. And then they, and the ghost crawler just disappears. And then I shrouded half a second later and then disappears again. Now I can see it, but it's only like 5% above water. And I, it's hard to click on it because you can't click on the shadow. It's just difficult. So I'm just trying to move in a straight line against the ghost crawler, outrange the scatter guns and use the UAV to debuff the accuracy of everything else. And if possible, kill the titanium generators early and try and move in a straight line. Don't spin at the end like I just did there. But that's the 144. I'm gonna bet this is instant base. Cool. I do have three ships at X1, two of them are at U2. So your results, your mileage may vary. So you have five ships now. Yeah, yeah, I spent five million points on so my the last one. Ninety nine might have paid off. What was that? So my fourteen ninety nine upgrade might pay off. Yeah, you'll take. Actually, the photon upgrade is really, really good. I didn't do the entire math, just part of it. It's really helpful. I just drove it for seven minutes damage. So sweet. I'll bet most people can do it under twenty five. My clicks. Which which did you do first? Did you buy your Ronin and start building it, or did you buy your upgrades? I bought, bought my upgrades so I could finish the one that's going on right now. Okay. And the other thing is, I mean, I have an open shipyard, but I also have seven tokens I can get, which can get a ship up to U3. So. So I, I'll have to decide if I want to do the Ronin and get that building or if I want to spend another few hours and upgrade one of these ones. I'll probably just do the Ronin. That's the 144, and here's the build I have. First, three ships, four ships are all the same. And then this last one has anti-missile proliferation <laughs> system for accuracy over the um, high-speed missile jets, I think it is. And you have two banshees. Yeah. Two banshees? Oh, oh yeah, you have two uh, MDS. Yeah. Well, here's the 146. This one was more complicated. And it kind of matters where you enter, what angle you enter this thing from. But it's sort of a round, or it's a, isn't it yeah. symmetrical? It, it's, well, we'll see in a second, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a center bit, and then it's not as symmetrical as the last 800 target, but there's a lot of things in here. Yeah, it just feels like a big target for... It does. 
Oh, it looks like a big target. Yeah, yeah. you've got one, two, you have one, two, three, four, five, six ghost crawlers. So that's exciting. Yeah, but if it came in from like two o'clock, I don't know if that would be advantageous, but that's a, you know, there's no, no ghost crawlers over there. But I don't know if it's good or bad. <laughs> I don't really think it matters too much. You just have to use the general strategy here. Yeah. You just if you know how to kill a ghost crawler it, or know how to approach the turret and whatever else, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So right here, I guess I'll zoom in and slow down. I have this turret and I'm far enough away from it, it's not shooting at me, but my UAVs are shooting at it as well as the lightning, making it do less damage and miss more often. So, But um, in theory, <clears throat> that's maxed at a single hit, correct? Yes, it should be maxed at a single hit, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the, the maximum number of stacks show that. I saw some people in Discord saying, if you kept on hitting it, I, I, I never could prove that out on the last set of targets. <clears throat> <clears throat> but uh yeah i gave up on trying to uh experiment with that with letting the uavs hit it again and again and i didn't really see any difference yeah it's, i think it's just one one hit and i think you've got oh you've gone with the uh the missile critical uh yeah i'm using the wolfpack road crew which just gives me 14 percent critical damage um, normally I use the sea serpents on these ones just to avoid, try to avoid some of the, uh, the missile damage. Yeah. I was loading this up when I was using four ships on a 921 or 912. Okay. a long target that's the only it's wonderful i don't like yeah and then you know probably when i hit it for the first time i'm going to let it sit there for five minutes and memorize where the the scattergun turrets are because otherwise you can drive pretty freely if you just keep going and you know move around the outside and kill things and just know, you know, you know, so this, this, in this example, if Derpy had came in from the left side of this island, he probably would have got fired at by the scatter guns, but he came in the right side, so it surfaced. So, so you're doing damage even on the shrouded ship. What the heck is the... Yeah. You can do, well, they're shrouded, they're stunned, they're surfeit, I don't know. I think if you're firing at it, Was he doing damage? It seemed like I was watching him. Looked like he was doing damage in, under the shroud, even. So why shroud this? Right guy? there, right there. I just yeah, yeah. It. I think if it at that exact it, moment, if it, shrouds, just, uh, if it shrouds while the it, it's already been targeted, and then uh, it shrouds those. No, no, I don't think they do because mm. we just watched one. I just watched one with my own eyes. If not, I don't see the point. They're just doing it now. Well, it's done right now. Tubes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm watching. I'm delayed. But it was it was shrouded right before that. Well, here's another one. Hmm. I just so I'm gonna shoot at it. It's going to shroud if I don't kill it. Uh, yes, it's shrouded right there. I just had three missiles hit it, three or four val shots hit it, and no damage. Shrouded, shrouded, so shrouded ships don't take damage. Take damage. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they got it on here, but. Yeah, because I remember, I recall if uh, what was the shrouded ship that came out with like the the PVP ship came out. Hell, right or, no, uh, start with an H. Um, Hell, rocket something. ship, rocket ship. Hell, something. Yeah, one of those reaver ones. Yeah, but if you if you for some reason you were firing at it, maybe it was just splash based damage. If you were firing at it because it was targeting a ship near it that wasn't, it would still do damage. I 
Ah, I'm, I, I'm gonna have to try and remember the name of that special now, or name of that ship now. I might be mistaking your graphics. As a short, there was a lot of hells that were going on. Hell Wraith was a sub. Hell Wraith, yep. Yeah, that was PV, PVE. Um, there's Hell Swarm. Hell Swarm, yeah. Um, is there a Hellfire? No. Uh, Bam is going rage. No, it was way after that. This was a tier eight. Okay, and we got a hell swarm. Uh, the hell swarm is the current one, isn't it? Yeah, this is the current hell swarm. I hell strike. Do not recall. Hell strike. It was not a hell strike. That was. Ah, hell with it. Mm -hmm. Well, damage taken about even corrosive penetrative. I could avoid corrosive damage if I drove better. Eleven minutes damage. Oh, that's not bad. So, yeah, yeah that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Most of on trip one and five, I guess. And how much time? Eleven minutes. No, to the. I uh, hit the target. Oh, about eight. eight or nine minutes. Yeah. That kind of. Yeah. Have you, did you try auto? I know you autoed with four ships and your stream. Yeah. I, I'll Auto. try Autumn now, I guess. Uh, Hellstar. Well, Hellstar was a whole different one. That was the one that was... I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Howlers. It was a Howler. 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 Okay, Howler. Okay, it wasn't a Hell. Okay. All right. Um, do you want to hit the um, the 900 target before you Auto? I suppose I should. I mean, I'm not sure which one, you know. You know what order you might want to take them in, because you have a, you have one at uh, um, at this point you only have uh, one at U three. I've, I've got two ships at U two. Oh, U two. Okay. Everything else is X one. Okay. Okay. Obviously. I was thinking. That, I think I was thinking the rest were at U three. Okay, so you have two at U two and then three at X one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So either way, I mean, you could auto. I mean, for my I'll, own, I'll hit the big one. Okay. Are you going to go for uh, points or for uh, bonus? I was going to go for the full points. Okay. Yeah, because I think that's worth it more than. I think the main damage is from the turrets, not the ships. So you might as well kill all the ships on the outside. Okay, yeah, because after you have the ability to get the 250k bonus, which is not huge, you could go in and kill all of the yellow flagged uh, buildings and ships, and that will end the whole encounter, and you will get that bonus. If you wait for the three minutes for the ships to start to spawn, um, you have the ability to get the full number of points, which is a million points. Um, when you ran through this uh, earlier, you only got 331k for killing basically the the ones with the yellow flags on them. So you get another 700,000 points by killing the ships on the the outside. Yeah, six, I'm not I'm not quite sure what there there are some turrets like this corrosive one right here. I'm not sure if that has points associated with it or not. I would assume so. But I also got the full million points without killing a few of those. So, without killing a few of what? Mm -hmm. A few of these turrets on the outside. Okay, and it seems like you shouldn't wait to kill the stun buildings. Uh, the stun buildings can be useful if I'm if I'm killing the ships at the same time. They they can be somewhat useful. Yeah. Because every building on the very outside here is the stun one. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking that that's sort of the pattern. That's what their expectation is. Once those ships start to come in, you use the stun buildings to stun them and then wipe them out and, you know, save them up for later. Yep. What? Did I just kill a stun building? Oh, well, there's a hundred. No, 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 no. As far as that pattern that you were driving drove you into the uh, the venom spitter or whatever the corrosive yeah, one. The, yeah the corrosive scatter again yeah. yeah which i mean i'm not too worried about 
they're mostly missing. I'm sure they're doing some damage. But I'm just circling, taking out all these large turrets. I'm going to avoid the very center um, so it doesn't end. But while I'm waiting for the ships, all other ships to come up, you can see in the mini-map on the outside, there's still a ring. Mm -hmm. While I'm waiting for those to come up, uh, I might as well kill all the turrets. Yeah, so th this is sort of like a tantric target. A what target? Tantric. Not uh, familiar with that word. Okay. I'm sure Bama knows what it means. Uh, okay, that one's it's done longer. No, I was just surprised it came out of nowhere. I was, but it's not three minutes haven't elapsed yet. But we're well, seeing because they, all the ships are spawned in by three minutes. They're going in. Oh, oh okay. Way. That's the end of the spending. Unit. Okay. They do okay. the small ships first. Like these just look like navigation rays. Looks like someone just forgot to draw the body of the ship. Like, those don't look like full ships to me. Like what? Is, you can't just give us a ship that's underwater and just not draw it. Like how am I supposed to shoot at it if I can't? What are you talking about? The ones. I'm seeing full ships here. They're, I mean, yes, but also the, the like the Dosicata ships. And there were also ones that were clearly not full of ships. Like okay. most of it was underwater. Okay. I don't, I don't like them doing that. These ones. That's a moving nav ray. <laughs> not a ship. <laughs> Hey TSM, I know it. I, I, you know, you know what tantric means. So we're gonna have to let uh, we're gonna have to let uh, Derpy uh, Google that on his own time. <laughs> what? I'm you not quite up? sure that its application to this target. <laughs> you were able to look it up. <laughs> well, you can see my screen this entire time. The, the I haven't you have moved to wait, at all. I've, I've, you know, the fact that you have to sort of wait and, you know, that, that's, okay. so you, you did to, Okay. No, that's, that's not what that word says it means. Right, <laughs> think about it this way. It's tantric is more about the journey than the destination. Well, this journey of 17 ghost crawlers <laughs> chasing me is not very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the first thing that pops up in Google is not really, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's an odd definition. <laughs> but yeah, you're not really taking that much damage from the ships. Yeah, I'm taking some because I'm not paying too much attention. Um, they, they are firing some Because you're Googling Tantric at the same time. You can see my screen at this entire time. I have not moved once. I've been on here the, the, the entire time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh oh, okay. <laughs> This target does take, does take a while. You're correct about that. The type of energy I feel towards it. Well, we could talk about that in the after show. <laughs> well, you you could also have the opportunity to drag them further south. And um, these and, ghost crawlers don't really get stunned too easily. Yeah, it doesn't last. Well, they get stunned. They just don't last forever. Yeah. I could I could take them over here and kill them there, but and it's a pain in the butt because if they're shrouded, they don't get stunned. <laughs> And you can't. I don't, know, I don't know about that, but you're probably right. I'm right. pretty sure I'm right. Alrighty. Yeah, so you just hit the S button at this point and finish her up and get, uh, what, 42, uh, 38 minutes of damage? I'll bet you this one's, oh, 32. Okay. Nah, it's a bit optimistic. 
40. Forty-one. Forty-one. You were closer. I went thirty-eight. So okay. Cross five ships, so it's average of eight. But you know, we see you get much more damage on the. Uh, for some reason, the first two ships, or at least the first two ships shown. I mean, but this this would be a good one to hit a few times before you put it up for the night. If you want to drive that often, but yeah. Well, forty-one minutes three seconds. Let's auto the. Let's auto the one forty-four. Okay. No crew because it ran out. Um, well. Oh, I just stacked up. Whoops. No, you don't need to be killed the full thing. I mean, most of the points, because the bonus is not necessarily negligible, but it's not not a huge thing. You know, 250k. 250k versus 1 million for doing damage. I don't yeah. think it's worth it to hit. Because you get... Well, you'd have to hit 5 144s to get... The well, one. if you're only doing 144s. But. Right. Yeah, because yeah, the uh, the uh, if you get if you hit the uh, uh, the two other targets, you're getting um, if you hit the the one forty four and the one forty six, you get a million points. So they're actually worth five hundred k each. So. See, I don't appreciate. If I was designing an auto target, I would have told all this, all the ships in this target. Okay, you're just all surfaced from now on. And there's none um, of the shrouding, deep diving stuff, invisible stuff. It's it's not happening. But and all well, everything should stay popped up, so you don't have this issue right here. Well, we ran into that with uh, oh, what's the ship that I hate the. Uh... The one that we get in the assault TLCs, uh, right? Yeah, now. the zealot. The zealot, because we we ran into that zealot target that nobody could beat Ottawa yet, right? I don't remember which one was. Was that you, yeah, yeah. Pegasus? No, 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 no. There was this, the zealot target. Oh, it's in the TLC. I, it's like I, I the second or third there. one. You, you know what I'm talking about? That people couldn't actually beat the time. Um. You would get a worse time driving it well than autoing it. Right. I remember yeah. that. And that, that's not really the way the game should work either. You know what I mean? Mm, I guess. It wasn't really, you know, that bad of a target. You know, you know, you get 23 minutes driving it, and then you got uh, 22 minutes uh, autoing it. But you couldn't beat the time. Um, I'm not really sure how to describe the target. I don't remember what it was a raid target. It's like the second or third one, and um, Cyber Strike, and yeah, all similar ones. ones. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of damage on the flagship. Oh, what happened? Put hey, my fleet there. Yep. My fleet's dead. What happened? It's most. It's like over a quarter dead. Yeah. That was worth with, worse with five ships than with four. So I guess you took a fair amount of corrosive. I, I've got yeah, jeez, wow, yeah. and that's from splash damage. Yeah. Oh, so I, I, more, I, yeah, you, you got yeah, you got more damage with five and one at X one, right? Yeah, three at X one now. One more, uh, I, the one I added in was an X one. Well, I guess I'll auto it again, see if I get the same. But you should not get two hours for an auto target. That's ridiculous. No, but you already had... You, you had already 41 had minutes. Oh, yeah, that's true. 
Yeah. But still, that was a lot. Of yeah, look, look. Okay, so one hour and 20 minutes. But I audited it with just over an hour. I did have 41 minutes damage, so that's good. Well, there's that one. Maybe I'll play around with that a bit more. Maybe I won't. I've still got some repair tokens, so. Okay. In fact, I have 22 left. Yeah, I saved on mine, too. Well, that's the raid. I think most people are going to have luck driving 144, 146, and the 912, but... Yeah, the targets don't look bad. They, you know, they do feel a little boring, but uh, a bit large. Yeah, a little large, and then I don't know. I mean, the hell, I uh, there was so much as far as like some of the raids, as far as like the feedback that they were getting. I put, posted the link in case anybody wants to join uh, for the end of the show or the after show, but. <laughs> I don't know. I've been finding the targets to be. Uh, there's no, there's no sense of adventure anymore. Because I remember, like, a lot of the players would complain about the old Hellstrike targets, where like, if you fucked up a little bit, you were you were going to lose half your fleet, and that, that 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 was you know that wasn't good. That wasn't a good situation, but. We've gone to, you know, and it's been this way for a long time. We've gone to this thing of automatic damage. And then it just feels like we're we're caught in this zone where the people that didn't drive well won, won the day. If that makes sense to you. Uh, that doesn't really. You don't think so? The people who didn't drive well won the day. That doesn't. People well, as, as far as we, we've gotten so much automatic damage, and now you know, and now, and, and the, and so what we've seen is we've seen targets that are uh, under undervalued as far as points versus time. Um, you know that you have to hit so many targets to get the points you need, but you don't really need to drive that well in order to get those points. If that makes sense. I guess it yeah. does. I, yeah, but that doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't take zero damage driving, and it's not really. I don't. I'm not sure. Well, okay, yeah, because before you were you were riding on a razor's edge with with a lot of the targets. Historic, you know, like the Hell Wraith is my, the best example. Like, you could go hit a Hell Wraith target, and you could you know, driving well. You could be instant repair in the water, driving well with one oops, you got four hours of damage, which again I do not think is a good thing. But it was, it, we've gone to the point where you know everybody's taking twenty minutes of damage, you know, as long as you have the correct correct upgrade level or whatever. Which I'm not, I don't know. It makes it a little less exciting, at least for me. I don't know. So, um, I'm thinking I'm going to push, unless anybody wants to do Canada facts. Um, I'm, I would I'm think, love to do some Canada facts. Uh, we could do Canada facts this week, or, or I don't know. Uh, well, let's go Canada. I, I'm, I was thinking of putting it off till next week, but let's go to slide 17 anyways. Anybody wants to join us, the link's there to uh, deal with Canada facts. All right. No, 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 you're skipping ahead to the answers. Fine, fine. Oh, it's this, okay. is, this is cheating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, as you know, that uh, Kickside has run out of Canada. And so we decided to do a little facts about Canada so you, you understand them better. I already have ideas for weeks two, three, and four. Um, but we, I thought we start off at this place that. Uh, you know, something you might not know about Canada. It has the longest coastline in the world of any country. Um, and it's mostly due to those freaking northern islands. And, you know, from Which what are I... not that large, but, you know, that's a different discussion. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. Well, no, we're going to still have that discussion as far as um, the, the area of an island versus, or the area of a... Uh, a body versus 
the the coastline but most of those northern islands it's polar bears have taken over and they're running prostitution rings drug rings and uh, casinos and the canadians don't even know about it because nobody lives there and that's really what's going on up there and nobody uh, nobody at all <laughs> and so um but let's uh let's go to this the second the second one and as far as why why does it have the the largest uh coastline and why are you gonna why are you gonna google who has the largest coastline and you'll see canada is always number one canada is got everybody owned on coastline absolutely owned but you will see things where you'll see the u.s is number 10 in coastline and in other places it's number two and this is what this slide is about it really deals with the resolution that you're dealing with um, on the left, you see 200 kilometers as far as measuring from point to point to determine coastline. Second one's 100 kilometers. Last one is 50 kilometers. But imagine if you go to five a meter, that coastline just goes up and up and up, especially with the complexity of the coastline that you have. Um, so, um, even if you do it atom by atom, I mean, how do you measure coastlines? Does anybody have, you know? <laughs> no. You, you, you can. A finite, a finite area can have an infinite perimeter. Yeah. Wow. And, and the shape of certain countries will really define this. Um, and so, um, does anybody want to guess? I mean, I think I, I th there are some people have already clued off as, you know, given a clue as far as if you already know the answer, you know, based on according to the CIA fact book, Canada's number one, what is number two? And I think the CIA fact book is using something around the 50 to 10 kilometer uh, range. And I, I hmm. guess I already tipped you Australia? off. Australia? Mm hmm. Think about the shape of Canada. Yeah, it has a lot of islands. Yeah, yeah. So what else has a lot of islands? Uh, I thought about Russia when I thought about the shape of Canada. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, well, I'm thinking northern Canada. Because that, that's where they're really getting their, you know, getting it worked out. Greenland? No, Greenland's top, but it's it's more about the islands. All right, go ahead, go ahead and click. Hmm, I see. <laughs> so, you know, coastline that really, if you have a ton of islands, has nothing to do with. You know, with the actual area of the country, it's just the coastline. So the, you know, Indonesia is, you know, I don't even know how many hundreds of islands. I think it. I think it's only going to matter if you needed to build a wall around your coastline. <laughs> around Mexico. <laughs> yeah, or, or or if you have you know beach renourishment needs, you know that's another thing. And if you know, and if you look at other, you know. Um, you know, this is this is from the CIA fact book, World Fact Book. But if you look at uh, if you look at some you know more scientific communities, you will see very different uh, results. Um, you know, one is like the United States jumps to number two, and that is chiefly due to Alaska um, between the Aleutian Islands and then Southeast Alaska so much coastline i don't have pictures of that um but australia is sort of just sort of like a, a box you know it doesn't really have all the islands that some of these other countries have and you know considering new zealand you know nobody was going to guess new zealand over china were they no yeah so i don't know 
just something to think about everybody um and if you do your research you know like i said you're you're, you're going to see these rankings change based on the resolution mapping resolution so all righty and tomorrow i think uh, next week we're going to talk about either craft dinner or why does canada have a ufo landing site well i'm gonna say for a ufo yeah i'm gonna vote for that one yeah yeah so uh we'll see stay tuned mm -hmm. so in case anybody like to join the after show the link is there and we will talk to you on friday where uh at least at that point we'll understand a little bit more about the uh the uh tlc um because we're not going to be able to encounter that and for at least another hour and 40 minutes it's so, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we will uh talk to you then good night all later people <laughs>